Hi everybody, my name is Keith and today I'd like to talk to you about Drew Loops. And Drew Loops are a concept of printing in the open air such that there's no supports underneath and the plastic from the 3D printer is meant to fall. The probably the most famous one of the uh, prints that uses this technique is the Super Flowers. Um, this is by Mark Peters. Um, I, as far as I understand it, He's the gentleman that kind of created this technique, or at least made it popular. Uh, he also has another quite famous print, which is the jellyfish. And he even did that into a chess set, which is just freaking awesome. Uh, Daniel Noray, uh, the gentleman that brought us Open RC. I uh, also created a fuzzy or furry vase. But today I will be showing you how to do Drew Loops on a Christmas tree ornament. And the reason we're doing that is, well, it's coming up to Christmas time and it's time to make some ornaments. The Christmas tree is designed uh, to be printed at a 025 millimeter layer height with a 20% infill and a point five millimeter perimeter width so unfortunately because I have a point four nozzle we'll have to make a few adjustments um, because the loops themselves are two millimeters wide and so we have a little bit of things to do to, to make these loops actually fall down appropriately but uh, let's go ahead and get started and uh, again we're gonna print this Christmas tree and uh, I will be using uh, Simplify 3D for this because I have a couple of tweaks that I want to make to the printing technique that I am familiar with doing in Simplify 3D. Mark Peters has done this in Cura, so there's no reason it can't be done in other slicers. I just wanted to do print the trunk of the tree and the tip of the tree at different speeds and different temperatures than the actual loops themselves, which is why I will be doing it in Simplify 3D. Okay, so we drop our model in, and then we're going to slice them up into three pieces. And those three pieces are the trunk, which will start, or start at the bottom, go all the way to the bottom of the loops, and then we have the loop section, and then we we're going to actually do the tip uh, a little bit separate. Um, the reason I'm doing this again in Simplify 3D is I want to print normally for the trunk and for the tip. I just want to do the droop loop technique for the actual loop portion and not the rest because you get really good results on this technique if you print real slow and so I don't want to print slow here uh, because well, it just doesn't need to be done that way. So we're going to chop this into three equal parts with the variable settings wizard and, and then the other location should be 8775 so now we have three sections All right. looking at the processes we're going to go ahead and just print pretty much normal. Get our layer height set at 0.25, which is what they recommended for the tree. And that kind of comes into play, especially when we talk about layer 350 as per the write-up. He talks about putting cooling back on at layer 350. So that layer number is kind of crucial if you are doing it in a in non-simplify because um, you may actually need the layer count as to when to actually turn cooling back on. But in Simplify, since we've already created into regions, we don't need to worry about the actual layer. But it'll come into play later nicely. Um, infill, we're going to go ahead and leave at 20% for the whole thing, uh, just like they suggested. Temperature, going to print my normal 195 uh, for this Hatchbox Translucent Green PLA. Now this works really well with PETG if you have it. The recommendation in the write-ups is a material that gets nice and oozy, which is why I'm going to up the temperature for my loops 
when I'm printing because this PLA tends to start getting really kind of goopy if I print it really warm. So I'm going to turn up the temperature quite a bit. So I'm going to leave everything normal um, on the actual printing as far as the cooling for the first portion. Making no changes here or there. One other thing I will point out is the internal thin wall type does need to be set to perimeters only. If you have it set to gap fill or single extrusion fill, uh, it may, can mess with your loops. That is extremely important in the process for the loops themselves, not so much for the trunk or the tip of the tree. All right, so we'll go into the actual loop portion. And we're not going to change anything on these. Uh, the perimeter count for the loop portion is critical if you're using a 0.4 nozzle on this tree because the width of each of the tree stems is 2 millimeters. Uh, 0.4, sorry, as 2 millimeters, the 0.5 nozzle that it was designed for, there is no infill. And with a 0.4 nozzle, if you do two perimeters, you will end up with some infill. So you need to do it, tell it that it's going to be three, and we'll see some what happens with that uh, later on. All right, I'm going to leave infill on. We are obviously no support for this technique, because that's the whole point. I'm going to turn the temperature up on my PLA to get it nice and oozy here. We're going to make sure that the cooling is off. And this is not critical to the technique, but it produces more consistent results if you turn the cooling off because then your cooling fan may not, or doesn't blow the loop as it's dangling from the nozzle. So it lays down pretty consistently. So we turn cooling off. We're going to drop the speed way down. Uh, a lot of people do this just to get consistent results. It is not absolutely necessary. But it does produce some nice consistent results when you bring it down. And then again, now, again, critical to this portion of it is that the thin wall type be set to perimeters only. And we're all set there. And everything should be in place for our tip. Just checking to make sure layer height, fill, no support temperatures, back down to normal. Cooling. This cooling setting should be just fine because it should turn the fan back on to 60%, but I'm going to actually kick it up and tell it that after layer two, bring that fan right up to 100%. And uh, that's going to really cool off that tip because the tip is really small and detailed and we want to make sure that it gets really cold uh, before we print any more on it. Another tip that was mentioned in the comments on getting the tip to form nicely is that you print more than one tree at a time so that you've got the added time of the nozzle movement from tree to tree for cooling time. So you may want to print more than one tree at a time if you're really concerned about the hanger portion. Speed is back up to normal and we are all set. All right, so let's go ahead and slice this up. And we've got this beautifully sliced tree. Now, the critical parts are that you see that the loops themselves are perimeter only and the best way to show you that is to do single layer and let you see these loops so the dark blue is the exterior perimeter the light blue is the interior perimeter and we see that this is where the three comes into play on the interior perimeters because the width of these apparently there is not consistent or is just off just enough that the slicer wants to make them different widths Sometimes there's enough for another full pass inside or not, as you can see. And the reason that that is important is if we go ahead, I'm just going to show you real quick by changing the perimeter count what happens if it's not that high. Alright, so now we get some infill in these loops. And what happens with that is 
we then get this little fuzziness going on because we've got a lot of material being extruded for the infill and it creates these really long strands because it's zigzagging back and forth so it's extruding a lot of material uh, over that same distance that it would for the exterior perimeter and you get this very inconsistent result uh, around it now it is a cool effect and if you're going for it go ahead and leave it in there but if you want consistent you want everybody to come to the same height you want to get rid of that infill so we'll go ahead and edit this back to tell it that there are three parameters And we are back to the way this was. And this information all actually comes from the original write-up on the Christmas tree. You can see here he's got his exterior perimeters, his interior perimeters. And he only actually did have two trips around because I'm guessing he uses a 0.5 nozzle as opposed to the 0.4. Um, so difference there. And, that, and you want to make sure if you go ahead and print anything else using this technique that you don't get any kind of infill on those loop portions of your print. All right, with that, I have showed you everything you need to know to actually successfully print uh, a droop loop. All right, I'd like to thank you for your time. I hope you've uh, learned how to do droop loops, and if you would be so kind as to share any of your prints, either via social media or uploading them to Thingiverse in the makes. And thanks again, we'll see you next time.